Welcome to our UN Pathways lecture series. We're, we're really pleased to be here tonight and very pleased that Ambassador Shilevich is uh, joining us. Um, this event is co-sponsored by the Record and Herald News and we're very happy for their, their support of this. Uh, I do want to ask, as usual, that cell phones, if you have them, you put them on some silenced uh, mode. I see a lot of people reaching down and into bags and otherwise. Thank you. Uh, let me introduce very briefly Ambassador Kamal. As probably many or most of you know by now, Ambassador Kamal is president of the Ambassadors Club at the United Nations and also the um, senior fellow at UNITAR, United Nations Institute for Training and Research. And Ambassador Kamal has been very active with the university and uh, we appreciate that deeply. And without further ado, I will introduce Ambassador Kamal who will introduce Ambassador Shilovich. Thank you. I have a major problem tonight in trying to introduce Ambassador Shilovich to you. Because Ambassador Shilovich is like uh, uh, some of the great people in history, a man of many parts. And you can introduce him by picking up any one of those parts singly. I could introduce him, first of all, as a distinguished diplomat. Here is a person who uh, started out in, uh, in law and then went into diplomacy and rose to the highest ranks in his country as a deputy minister and then uh, came to an even higher rank, in my opinion, which is that of ambassador to the United Nations, uh, a post which he held with great eminence for many years at a time when uh, the post of ambassador of Yugoslavia to the United Nations meant something. In that capacity, he had the distinct privilege of foreseeing what was going to happen to Yugoslavia. And so, before the problem started in a breakup of a country and the fighting and everything else, Ambassador Shilovic tried to bring sense into the different governments and the different authorities involved. And neither the one nor the other would listen to him. This is a person who, is, who was Yugoslav but happened to be Croat in his origin. And he spoke to the Serbs and they said, no, you've got to take sides, you've got to defend. And he spoke to the Croats and they wouldn't agree to him. So the Serbs thought he was an enemy and the Croats thought he was a traitor. And so, wisely, he was able to judge the problems that were going to emerge, and so he left, he resigned, as the last ambassador of Yugoslavia to the United Nations, knowing that this was not going to be easy, that he would have to readjust, and that he would be out in the cold with no job, no income, no country, no nothing. And that requires courage. I could introduce him in his second incarnation, which was that of a United Nations staff officer. Because uh, the United Nations, knowing his merit, immediately picked him up. And then uh, he, jo he joined the Department of Humanitarian Affairs, then became the representative in Tajikistan. And so, uh, since he had been associated with the United Nations for, I don't know, 40 odd years, he is a person who has been part of the UN Mafia since the 1960s. So it was obvious that the United <coughs> Nations would pick him up and put him to good use, which they did. And he, once again, he performed with preeminence and earned the respect of the international multilateral system. I could introduce him as a Yugoslav. This is a person who was the representative of a country which did some of the most glorious things and some of the worst things in history. Glorious because Yugoslavia is the country that created that true innovation in the post Second World War period, which was to come forward with a doctrine which was called non-alignment. A glorious doctrine because it gave the three quarters of the world, which had no role before non-alignment. It gave these middle countries, today 135 of them, a role and a voice 
and a respectability which they would never have got but for the emergence of the idea of non-alignment from Yugoslavia. So that was a historic contribution of the country of this person to the history of the world. It's a great pity, of course, that uh, uh, non-alignment was somehow connected with the Cold War and that it could flourish only in the context of the Cold War, which is why most of us who come from the non-aligned countries truly regret the end of the Cold War, which we think was a marvelous <laughs> phenomenon, and, uh, and look forward hoping that it will somehow come back. Uh, because at the moment, the non-aligned movement members don't know who to be non-aligned with or against. <clears throat> and so we are waiting for the Cold War to return. But this country, which came forward with such a gorgeous idea, also created some of the worst incidents in history. There you have to just look back at what happened in Bosnia, because there we saw crimes against humanity, which we thought we had stamped out in 1945, with the slogan of never again. And then 50 years later, there it was happening all over again in front of our eyes, and people were being slaughtered, murdered, pushed, bulldozed into mass graves. And till today, we see the effects of this. Now, this, there are, as I said, many options of how I can introduce Ambassador Shilovich. But I would prefer to choose none of these and to choose instead to introduce him as a friend. Because this is a person who is a friend, a friend for whom I have enormous respect and affection and I have no difficulty in acknowledging to him that also a friend for whom I have great envy because he has done all the things that I would like to do but have not managed to do and so every time I see him I gnash my teeth and have to <laughs> somehow find a, 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 an adjustment between envy on the one side and respect and affection on the other but let him not think that friendship is going to stand in the way of uh, my putting pressure on him today because uh, this is a refined audience and he is going to get a meal after this audience and there is no free, free lunches or free dinners in this world and so he'll have to work for his dinner <laughs> and to do that I would like to ask him a question and it's a very simple question but it has been rankling in our minds here is a country which for 50 years after World War II, was able to teach its grandmother, namely the Soviet Union, how to suck eggs, and stood independent and proud in front of a superpower called the Soviet Union, and did it successfully. And did it, in our judgment, perhaps rightly or wrongly, due to the force of character of one man who stood at the top of that country, namely Tito and who held the whole thing together for 50 years despite its history of having been responsible for the beginning of World War I. And so Yugoslavia had a history, but Tito was able to get it together. And then Tito dies and the whole thing falls apart. And the question that I would like Ambassador Shilovich to address is if Tito could do it, what happened afterwards? But before he gets a chance to speak, I want him to know that I have, out of politeness and friendship for him, not chosen to point out the fourth way in which I could introduce him, which is as the husband of Dasha, his charming wife. Because uh, I'm, as you know, a Frenchman, and in France we say, cherchez la femme, look for the woman behind the man. And uh, while uh, Ambassador Shilovich is good, and he's damn good, uh, uh, his wife is uh, not a person to be taken lightly. Here is a person who is a respected journalist, who was an activist for women and for NGOs in Yugoslavia, who has status in Canada because she was working in Canada advising the Canadians.